Bonjour and welcome to lesson number five at Language TD. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the French school system. And there are so many words and terms that you'll be hearing all the time when talking about the French school system. Uh, this is going to be very informative and you're going to learn quite a few things today. Uh, so first of all, as you can see here, uh, the, the French go in reverse when we talk about grades, you know, first grade, second grade, etc. Uh, and also for uh, the grades in the elementary school system, most people uh, talk, uh, give them uh, strange names. I didn't growing up. Uh, maybe that's because I went to a private school. But, um, but here they are. Uh, first grade is called uh, CP, cours primaire, uh, CP. And I used to call it 11e, like 11th grade. All right, and we go in reverse. But most people go in reverse starting in sixth grade, which is middle school. But if you start from the beginning, most people would call it CP. First grade is CP. Second grade is called CE2. CE2. Uh, I'm sorry. Second grade is called CE1. CE1. I used to call it dixième. Je suis en. You say, je suis en CP. Je suis en dixième. Je suis en CP. Je suis en CE1. Je suis en CE2 for third grade. Je suis en CE2. Of course, remember we speak fast, we say je suis, so je suis en CE2. Je suis en CM1, or je suis en CM1. Uh, I used to call it 8th grade, that's 4th grade in America. CM1, je suis en CM1, je suis en CM2. I'm in uh, the 5th grade. Je suis en CM2, or je suis en CM2. And this is uh, le primaire, right? Elementary school. Le primaire. D'accord? L'école primaire, le primaire, we just say. Okay, ensuite, if we continue, we have sixth grade, which is la sixième. This is the only one that's the same in America and in France. Then we just do everything in reverse, right? Um, don't be mistaken. Uh, a lot of uh, movies, sitcoms, make the mistake of calling middle school le co uh, a college, collège. It's not. Collège in French means middle school, okay? From sixth grade to ninth grade. For us, ninth grade is still middle school in France. Uh, sixième is a uh, sixth grade, uh, cinquième, seventh grade, quatrième, eighth grade, troisième, ninth grade, seconde, tenth grade, première, eleventh grade, and terminal, twelfth grade. So you say, je suis en sixième, or je suis en sixième, uh, je suis en première, I'm a junior in English, you say, I'm a junior, we just say, I'm in the eleventh grade, and that means I'm in first grade in France. So, je suis en première, or je suis en première, when we speak fast. I'm a senior, would be, je suis en terminal. It's not like a terminal phase of a disease, but it's just high school. Je suis en terminale. Je suis en terminale. I'm a senior. I'm a 12th grader. Same thing. Je suis en terminale. D'accord? Uh, terminale. Ensuite. Uh, a day in... Um, so, by the way, let me go back uh, real quick. Uh, this is collège. Uh, sorry, this is collège all the way to ninth grade included, and then high school is three years in France, 10th, 11th, 12th. So, seconde, première, terminale. That's high school. Le lycée, right? Le lycée. Let me write it here. Le lycée. D'accord. Ensuite, a day elementary school. So, kids go to school from age 25 until 4.30, usually with a big lunch break from 12 to 1.30. Even though there was a law that was passed this year in 2000, uh, in 2015, actually, to change uh, uh, the schedule a little bit. And I think kids are getting out of school earlier now, uh, about 3.30 or 3.45. And a lot of parents are complaining. Uh, and there's a big uh, lunch break from 12 to 1.30. So, maybe that's changed too. Uh, but it was like that for a long, long time, at least. The cafeteria is called la cantine. We also call it le self uh, or la cafeteria, uh, but mostly la cantine or le self. Uh, and um, le surveillant is uh, the supervisor, school supervisor. We say le surveillant. We also know him as le pion, the pawn in a game. Le pion. That's the colloquial term for uh, the supervisor. So le surveillant or le pion. He watches the student during recess, which uh, recess, which is la récréation. And uh, usually kids don't say la récréation, it's too long of a word, so they will shorten it and say la récré. Okay? La récré. Ensuite, uh, middle school, le collège. In elementary school, kids uh, all take the same classes, and things start to change in, uh, in middle school, 6th grade to ninth grade, and all the way to uh, college, actually. Um, and 6th grade, kids uh, choose between English and German in terms of uh, foreign languages. 
And in the eighth grade, they choose those who took German take English, and those who took English start taking Spanish in the in the eighth grade. Okay, even though now uh, they start doing a little bit of an introduction to English even in elementary school, even though it's not big, it's just a little bit of vocab, but still, it's still good. So kids get out of school at twelve on Wednesdays, but oftentimes in high school they have to come on Saturday morning to take a quarterly exam, and they call it DST. It stands for Devoir sur table in one subject. So each Saturday is a different subject. It can be French, then English, Spanish, math, physics, chemistry, biology, history, geography, philosophy uh, in 12th grade. Uh, and these exams last three hours in the 10th and, 10th and 11th grade and then four hours in the 12th grade. Okay, Saturday morning you come, in the morning, boom, start writing, writing for three, four hours. Nice. Brings back great memories for me. Uh, if you look at a report card, you will see something called SVT. You'll talk, you'll hear talk, uh, students talk about uh, SVT, and that's Sciences de la Vie et de la Terre. It's a little bit like in politics, you know, something that just start changing the names for the sake of changing the names. We're not sure why. It used to be called biology when I was a kid, bi la biologie. And then one day they come say, oh, let's not call it biology anymore. We won't call it biology. We're going to call it SVT. It's like, oh, okay. But it's the same thing. Don't worry about it. So it's Sciences de la Vie et de la Terre. So it's been like this for at least 20 years now. D'accord. Then you'll see report cards, you'll see LV1, LV2, it stands for Langue Vivante, Foreign Language. So first foreign language, second foreign language. LV1, LV2. D'accord. Then you'll see Physics Chimie. It's the same class for us, same teacher. It's really one class, Physics, Chemistry, and the teacher's going to do Physics, and then they're going to switch and do Chemistry, and then Physics, and then Chemistry. Uh, EPS uh, stands for Education Physique et Sportive. That's our PE class. We call it EPS. D'accord? La moyenne, that's what all the French kids talk about, is la moyenne. It's the GPA or the average. What's the average grade for the class? Oh, it's 12 out of 20. 22 sur 20. Uh, but my uh, GPA, ma moyenne, is 11 out of 20. 11 sur 20, which is decent in France. I know, it sounds like it's horrible, like 55%, but it's decent over there. Uh, la retenue, also known as la colle, is a detention. La colle, glue stick. Yeah, I know, go figure. <laughs> La retenue, the E is silent here, or la colle is uh, uh, detention. Le carnet de notes, that's what we call uh, a report card. Okay, le carnet de notes. The, the E is al almost always uh, swallowed when you have a de, which means of or from or about. D'accord, le carnet de notes. Une note, remember, is a grade. D'accord? Uh, this is an example of a report card. Uh, with all the nasty comments that teachers uh, can sometimes write, I don't know if things are changing now, uh, hopefully, because I remember they can be really uh, cruel sometimes. Like this one, I like it. Occupe une chaise, sitting on a chair, really. Un conseil qui te le for the English teacher, whose uh, student has a 1 out of 20 piece of advice, at least leave Europe. <laughs> uh, Hong Kong n'est pas, Hong Kong n'est pas un, un grand gorille géant. Hong Kong is not a giant gorilla. <laughs> yeah, that would be awkward. Uh, uh, attempts to blow up the lab. Yeah, in physics, you shouldn't do that. Francais, not Molière, is not a big tooth. Molière, oh, mo uh, molar. He thought it was molar in your teeth. Yeah. Molière is not a big tooth. Okay, n'est pas une grosse dent. They're all funny. Oh, well, it's a little sad, too. Uh, lycée is high school, as I said. High school is from 10th, uh, 10th to 12th grade. In 11th grade, high school students are pretty much asked to major in a field. So long story short, we have to choose among three specializations. Uh, the end of high, for the end of high school, called the BAC. Uh, that's the uh, exam, national exam that we all take the same day, uh, same week at least. Um, and so the big, big uh, fields that most students want to get into are science, economics and math, or literature languages with philosophy, a lot of philosophy. No matter whether you like it or not, you get eight, eight hours of philosophy as the most important class. It's only 12th grade philosophy, okay? Um, so... And then there are other fields that were really not very much respected until now, but I think things are changing because people realize that they're really good fields to get into uh, that specialize straight towards you know being a mechanic or an engineer, uh, an accountant, and they were you know not very uh, uh, very well respected until recently. And I think people understand that you know it takes you straight to a job really. Within each section, uh, students have a few options to know which grade will count more in your GPA and on the back. Uh, the importance of a class is based on what we call coefficient. So you always hear French students talk about their coef, coefficient, meaning how many times the grade uh, from a class will be counted for the GPA and the back. 
for instance, in the science section, math has a coefficient of seven, which means that math will be counted seven times uh, when uh, counting the average uh, of a student's grade. Okay. So for the scientific section, here's the coefficient. How many times each grade will be counted? So we'll go from the bottom. Uh, SVT. Um, so biology will be counted as a, uh, for uh, six times. Physics, chemistry will be three times. Uh, math is seven times. Philosophy three times. Uh, the, the second foreign language is two times. Uh, in, uh, English mostly or German will be once. History, geography three times. French and all two times. French and written French is two times, and uh, sports is two times. Okay, coefficient deux. That tells you that science uh, weighs a lot. And there's usually actually uh, there's usually an option that we have to choose from, and um, usually they can choose between math, um, biology, and physics or chemistry, I believe. D'accord. Uh, this is the economic section. Uh, look at this. Economy is seven times. Then you have math five times, you have history and geography five times, and then you have French uh, twice, sports twice, and then uh, philosophy four times. Science altogether is twice, so it doesn't really matter much. And again, they'll have an option to, uh, to add a class. And they have to choose between uh, adding more importance to economy, uh, math, or history. So they can add two, uh, two points in the coefficient for one of these classes. Here's mine. That's what I did. Uh, it was the literary section. Um, here you go. Philosophy, by far the most important, seven. But you also have um, French, which is a uh, four. Uh, there's a uh, French uh, and uh, literature. I think it's changed since I took it uh, a long time ago, 20 years ago at least. Uh, but yes, uh, three and two. I'm not sure what that means. Um, yeah, maybe there's a French, three. And then there's a literature class which is, counts for two, and then there's another uh, uh, there's another class. I mean, it's it's a lot altogether. Yeah, things change. So I'm a little lost on that one. Uh, but uh, foreign languages, four first foreign language, second language is worth four as well. And among the options, you can take uh, another foreign language, or you can take the same that's going to be worth more. You can take uh, more French, or you can take something else, and I forgot. Okay, and science is uh, close to nothing too. The, it looks like there's no math here. I know I math was worth two when I was uh, in high school, and apparently it's disappeared. That's a little sad. So le bac, le bac is our national exam. It's the one ticket exit of high school for college. All seniors take it at the same time at the end of 12th grade. And if you fail, you repeat 12th grade. How nice is that? The truth is that to pass, you have to get 10 out of 20. If you get between 8 and, two, and 10 out of 20 on your average, uh, you have what you call le repêchage. Let me see if I wrote something on this. Yeah, so 10 out of 20 is passing, and you just pass. 12 out of 20 is a mention assez bien, which is like honors, passing with honors. Uh, 14 to 20, uh, 14, out, 14 out of 20 is a mention bien, it's really good, it means it's as well. And 16 out of 20 is, you know, barely anybody gets that, but in case you do, run into someone who's really bright, it means very good, it's excellent, okay? Uh, that being said, you don't just fail when you get below 10. Um, you don't just fail. Uh, 8 to 10, you can still uh, take a makeup exam in September. Or is it June? Not sure. It could be September. Usually, all these poor students who get between 8 and 10 have to spend the summer studying, and then they can take a makeup exam, all exam, and pick the worst grades that they had and try to get a better grade on the uh, all exam. That we call the repêchage. Repêchage. Like fishing you out of the water, really. Repêchage. Le repêchage. D'accord. Ensuite, um, now college and university in Europe have created common standards, which was not the case when I was in college. You can still obtain a two-year college degree called Doug. Okay, sometimes you know people, you'll ask people, what, what kind of grade did you, what kind of degree did you get? And say, I got a Doug. That's a two-year degree. Or three-year degree was called licence back then. I think things have changed again. It was called licence, and a four-year degree was called maîtrise. We now have a European five-year degree called master. The many students still get a DEA or DESS, which used to exist, and I think they still do. Um, DEA or DESS are pretty much a five-year degree. Uh, instead of giving the actual name of the degree, many people say they have a BAC plus 2, BAC plus 3, BAC plus 4, BAC plus 5, BAC plus whatever. That's how French college students, the people talk about their college degree. 
let's say I have a BAC plus 2, so BAC high school plus 2 years of college, BAC plus 3, BAC plus 4, etc. Um, the daily routine of the French, the daily routine that most people experience has a very French name based on the Paris fast-paced life. It's called Metro Boulot Dodo. Metro Boulot Dodo, which is subway, work and sleep. Metro Boulot Dodo, okay? Every morning, many people like to go buy their baguette, croissant, brioche. I know I did. At the bakery, yeah, most people do. Especially on weekends, the French are willing to wait in line for uh, up to half an hour, if not more, to get their beloved bread, and they don't mind. It's true, I enjoyed it. I always waited in line on Saturdays and Sundays. I chit chat with people on the line. It was really nice. Time to socialize with others. It's very nice. Baguette Viennoise, that's what you can get in a bakery. Baguette Viennoise, oh, I totally recommend that one. It's beautiful, beautiful. Brioche, of course, it's wonderful. We have so many types of brioche. I can, I, there's not a single one I could say, you know, I'll go for this one. They're, they're all really good. Uh, all a little different, that's what I love about it. And you go from one bakery to another, they're all different than that you might know already. Millefeuille is uh, something that the French love as well, the thousand leaves. Uh, and religious as well, another one that the French love. It's good, they call it the nun. D'accord? Sports. Soccer is by far the number one sport in France. You will know that, I guess. Uh, and we call it le foot. So what we, uh, what, how do we call football? It's American football. So it's le foot américain. D'accord? Um, and our two historical rival teams are PSG and Marseille. Those two uh, teams hate each other. And it's not that they hate each other. Well, the supporters do hate each other, I think. Yeah, they always have to call like 10,000 cops for a soccer game when these two meet. And the French also like cycling. Tennis and rugby. Okay, let's move on to something else. Okay, so now we're gonna get into uh, the real thing, real uh, uh, grammar. All right. So, in case you don't know, there are three different kinds of verbs in French, just like in Spanish. And uh, there's the first group verbs. Uh, there are different names, but there's the first group verbs, second group verbs, third group verbs. All right. Um, you can recognize them by the infinitive, the ending of the infinitive. The infinitive is a verb when it's not conjugated or a verb outside of a context. Like to be is the infinitive of, a, uh, of a I am, okay? Uh, he has, the infinitive is to have. We are, the infinitive is to be. He works, the infinitive is to work. They saw, the infinitive is to see. She has gone, the infinitive is to go. So all those first group verbs, the ending is going to be er. It's pronounced e, okay? So you have travailler, everybody thinks it's to travel, it's not, it's to study. Uh, it's to study or to work, and it's interesting, first mistake, you know, I always talk about the mistakes that other books make, and, uh, well, it's not that it's a mistake, they'll, till, they'll teach you that the verb to study is étudier in French, okay, nice, but we just never use that verb étudier, instead we use the verb travailler, okay, so keep that in mind. If you see étudier, disregard it, nobody uses it. To say study, the French will always use the verb travailler, okay, which is the same as to work. So, travailler, regarder, which is to look or to watch. And the at is included in the verb. Regarder, écouter, to listen to. The to is included in the verb, you don't need to add it. Écouter, so you listen to someone or something. Marcher, to walk or march. Marcher, aimer, téléphoner, parler, to speak or to talk. Préparer, to prepare, to fix a meal. Préparer. Uh, Chercher, to look for, and the for, again, is included. Chercher, trouver, to find, enregistrer, to record. Let me say this again because everybody struggles with that one. Enregistrer, enregistrer, enregistrer. And finally, to download one of the most important verbs you need to know in French, télécharger, télécharger, knowing that charger is the verb to load, charger, télécharger. So here's how you use it. What you want to do to use an ER verb is you're going to drop the ER ending and for each subject pronoun, which is je for I, tu for you, il for he, elle for she, on for one in the sense of we. This is the formal we, nous, which we never use really in uh, spoken French. Uh, vous, you guys, or you sir, and il, elle, plural. Well, it's going to be E, E, S, E, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T. All right. Number one thing you should uh, keep in mind is that these three endings are silent. And that one is silent too. Very important because so many of my students, especially in high school, you know, adults try to be more careful because they really do want to learn and uh, really be able to speak, so they try to remember. But do not pronounce that ENT, otherwise it sounds like that. 
That's what we hear when you mispronounce and you pronounce the E-N-C, okay? So that's silence, silence, silence. That one we never use, so when you think of it, you just drop the E-R, that's it. And remember, this is the one that you, that's going to sound different that you're actually going to use. And this is pronounced A, just like the infinitive, A. Okay, so let's take a look at the example, uh, an example, and see how it sounds. So, silent, 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 silent. J'écoute, to listen to. Okay, j'écoute, tu écoutes, il écoute, elle écoute, on écoute. Nous écoutons, vous écoutez, ils or elles écoutent. I'm connecting the silent S, I'm connecting it to the next vowel sound, okay? Um, keep in mind, we never say no, we don't really use it. It's written, written in French in newspaper articles, in books, then you'll see it. Uh, but we really say on, on écoute. Remember, tu écoutes, whenever you have a vowel after the two, we're going to uh, uh, drop that U when we speak fast, which is pretty much all the time, really. So people will say, t'écoutes. T'écoutes quoi? What are you listening to? Tu écoutes, ou dit t'écoutes. D'accord? Again, j'écoute, tu écoutes, il écoute, elle écoute, on écoute, nous écoutons, vous écoutez, ils ou elles écoutent. D'accord? Ensuite, let's go over some examples. Je chante, or chante. If I say it faster, I'm going to try to drop the E and connect the J and the SH together. It's me chante. Elle chante faux is she sings out of tune. It's like she, she sings wrong. Okay? Elle chante faux. Je chante. I'm singing or I sing. Tu travailles. Tu travailles. Are you working? We'll go over the questions, but you can put it that way. You say, you're working. Tu travailles. So remember, it's to be doing something or to do something. Remember the verb, the, the, the present continuous does not exist in French. So to say you are doing something, you say you do something. So are you working is you work. Okay, tu travailles. Je travaille trop. I work too much. Je travaille trop. We don't say the P. And if I say it faster, I'm going to drop the E and try to combine the J and the T together. And it's going to be je travaille trop. The French will always say je travaille trop. Instead of nicely saying, je travaille trop. So if that's all you learn with another method, it will be useless because I know that you, the French, again, native French speakers will think that je travaille and je travaille are just the same. They won't bother telling you. But I know that you don't hear the same thing as English speakers. So let me tell you, je travaille, that's how you read it, but people will really say, je travaille. D'accord? Elle écoute de la musique. Again, We'll go over that. That's some for feminine words. Elle écoute de la musique. Elle écoute de la musique. Plus fort means louder. Fort is strong or loud. Okay, so louder is plus fort. La télé est cassée. The TV is broken. The TV is broken. La télé est cassée. Cassée is broken. Nous regardons la télé, we're watching TV. Again, it's very formal, people would not say it. They would say, on regarde la télé, and even more than that, I told you an E in second position is going to be swallowed. So it's going to be, on regarde la télé. On regarde la télé. D'accord? Sometimes the French used to like, the, they used to like, almost use made up words. So they have téloche. Sometimes they're going to use, it's a little random, but you might hear it, la téloche. D'accord? Vous téléphonez à un ami. Vous téléphonez à un ami. Remember, we always say to telephone to someone, okay? Sometimes it's a little random. Usually when you have a two after a verb in English, you'll have one in French. Not always, okay? So keep that in mind. Vous téléphonez à un ami. You are calling, you're uh, telephoning to a friend. Oui, il est français. Yes, it's French. Oui, il est français. D'accord? She's arresting a man. Elle arrête un homme. Arrête, remember this E means that in all French there used to be an S that was dropped, we stopped pronouncing and then we stopped writing it and we put this accent circonflex to remind people that there used to be an S. So you see it in English, arresting. Elle arrête un homme. So the un usually you don't hear the N, but if it's followed by a vowel sound, and the H is silent, it's followed by a vowel sound, we connect the N to the O. So, elle arrête un homme. Un homme, d'accord? With an N sound. Il est dangereux, and again, we're going to skip this E and say, il est dangereux. No X, don't say the X. Il est dangereux. Il est dangereux. D'accord? Ensuite, je télécharge une chanson. Uh, the verb télécharger is the verb to download, okay? The infinitive is télécharger. D'accord? Télécharger. 
download. The verb charger is the verb to load. Télécharger, to download. Je télécharge une chanson. Je télécharge une chanson. Ok, une chanson is a song. Uh, je télécharge, if I say it faster, the French will truly pronounce it je télécharge. Again, they're going to drop the E and try to connect the J and the T and it'll be turned into a sh. Je télécharge une chanson. Okay, get used to it. That's how the French will pronounce it. So you can totally say, je télécharge une chanson, je télécharge un film. But the French will say, je télécharge une chanson. Okay? Louise Attack. J'adore ce groupe. Louise Attack. Great band, by the way, if you want to look it up on YouTube. Great music. Uh, it's uh, uh, Celtic rock. Uh, and um, it's beautiful. Lyrics are great. Uh, the singer sounds like uh, Jacques Brel a little bit. I love it. <clears throat> so, a, a band is un groupe, okay? Don't say une bande. Une bande is more like of a gang. A gang of friends, okay? Ensuite, uh, keep this in mind, the following thing, okay? It's something that they don't really teach you in schools or in, on Rosetta Stone or all these other methods, is that the present tense in French really regroups three different tenses in English. So in that sense, the French present tense is really easier than the English present tense, okay? It's uh, he lives, he's living, or he has been living. I do, uh, I am doing, and I have been doing. All this is present tense. There's no specific tense for those, which don't exist in French. It's all present tense. So I've been living in Paris for 10 years. I live in Paris, all right? I've been waiting for an hour would be I wait for an hour. Okay, so ils habitent en France depuis 10 ans. They have been living, have been living in France for 10 years. The for is going to be depuis. Pour is simply, oh, this is for you. C'est pour vous, c'est pour toi. But for duration, for a period of time, is going to be depuis. Okay, depuis 10 ans. Ensuite, there are plenty of poodles here. Il y a plein de caniches ici. A poodle is a caniche. Il y a plein de caniches ici. Again, remember, il y a means there is or there are. And remember that the French will always pronounce it ya. They will almost never say il y a. They will skip the il entirely and sounds like yes in German. Ya. Il y a plein de caniches ici. Even plenty of. The of is going to be swallowed. The e is going to be swallowed. And it's going to be turned into a d apostrophe. Okay? So it's going to sound like il y a plein de caniches ici. Il y a plein de caniches ici. You hear a slight d attached to the plein. Okay? Ensuite, the verb to look for is chercher, and the uh, for is included in the verb chercher. D'accord? So, il cherche son portable depuis ce matin. Again, it's going to, uh, without a context, we can't really tell if it's he looks for, he's looking for, he's been looking for. So, let's assume it's he's been looking for his cell phone since this morning. He has been looking for, the for is included in the verb, so he looks for. Il cherche son portable depuis ce matin. Ce matin, this morning. Ce matin. Ce matin. When the French speak fast, they will tend to pronounce ce matin. Skip the E and connect the S sound to matin. Ce matin, this morning. D'accord? Il cherche son portable depuis ce matin. The S is silent. If I speak a little faster, I will skip the L again and say il cherche son portable depuis ce matin. Okay? It's lost. We say he's lost because everything has gender, masculine or feminine. So for the cell phone, we say he's lost. Il est perdu. Perdu. D'accord? Il est perdu. Ensuite, the verb to find is trouver. Il trouve une pièce de 10 dollars. A 10 euro coin. Oh, sorry, dollar coin. I was mixed up between the euros and the dollars. So uh, he finds, he's finding. A coin of ten dollars. I changed that to a ten euro coin. Il trouve une pièce is a coin. Remember, it's also a pièce uh, has a lot of other meanings. Uh, quite a few actually. Uh, it's a coin. It's also a play. Une pièce. It's also a room. A random room in a house or a building would be une pièce. Okay. Une pièce de dix dollars. A coin of ten dollars. That's how we say a ten dollar coin. A coin of ten dollars. Une pièce de dix dollars. Remember, 10, when it's followed by a word, we don't say the X, so it's 10, 10 dollars. He's lucky, very dramatic, we say, il a de la chance, he has some luck. Okay, and if I say it faster, I would say, il a de la chance. I would swallow the E and pronounce a D apostrophe. Il a de la chance. Okay, we have other uh, very uh, idiomatic uh, expressions for he's lucky. They're more colloquial of slang. Let me teach you just a few. Um, 
you could say il a du bol, il a du bol, il a de la veine, pronounced faster would be il a de la veine, again I'm going to swallow that E and connect the D straight to the LA, il a de la veine, il a du po, il a du po, that's a ball really, so he's got some ball, whatever that means really originally, vein like the veins in your body and the pot, uh, like a pot of flour, okay, il a du bol, il a de la veine, il a du po, they all means, uh, they all mean he's lucky, il a de la chance. Elle trouve le patin à glace ennuyeux. She finds ice skating boring. D'accord? Elle trouve le patin à glace ennuyeux. Uh, ennuyeux. Boring. You don't say the X. Elle préfère le foot. Elle préfère le foot. Uh, il glisse sur une flaque d'eau. He's slipping on a water puddle. Ok? Une flaque d'eau. A puddle of water. Eau is water. Il glisse sur une flaque d'eau. He's slipping on a water puddle. Ok, he's clumsy. Il est maladroit. Il est maladroit. Maladroit. We don't say the T. A girl would be, elle est maladroite. You would add an E and you hear the E. Then you would hear the T. Elle est maladroite. Elle est maladroite. She's clumsy. Il est maladroit. He's clumsy. The opposite. We have the opposite, which is il est à droite, elle est à droite. And that's being well balanced. Okay? Il est à droite, or well coordinated. Okay? Il est à droite, elle est à droite. D'accord? And that's the verb glisser, which is to slip. It's also to slide, as we can see on the next slide. Je glisse sur la glace. Je glisse sur la glace. I'm sliding on the ice. Glass. It's also ice cream, by the way. Okay, sport de glisse or sliding sports. You'll see that in newspaper articles. Je glisse sur la glace. D'accord? All right, that's it for today. It's already a lot of information. Uh, you'll get assignments on all this and uh, more tools to practice on oral comprehension. Um, if you have questions, send them my way. Otherwise, I'll see you soon for next lesson. Salut!